Hi, I'm George, and I'll be showing you how to make a custom Minecraft Texture Pack 1.15. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share as well and share with your friends. The more shares I get, the more videos I can make. And also take a look at my channel and subscribe. I do a lot of videos every single week, usually about four on Minecraft. Okay, let's get to it. In this custom Minecraft Texture Pack 1.15, we'll be making new window panes for the house back there. Now that pink window in the middle, we'll be changing the panes in that one to give us more of an old-fashioned cottage kind of a look. Now you'll need a few things to do this. You'll need to have the Texture Pack, the jar file, and I'll show you where to find that. You'll need some program to unzip that file. Any unzip program will work out just fine. You'll also need to have some program to recompile this back into a zip file. I personally use 7-zip. I'll leave a link for that. And you can also use WinRAR if you want. And I'll point out the things to watch for in both of those two programs. You'll also need to have some kind of a graphics program to work on the textures. Any graphics program will work. You can use Paint.net. You can use the Windows Paint 3D program if you're over in Windows 10. I happen to like using Photoshop Elements. I just have it on my computer, so I tend to use that one. But any program is just fine. They all work basically the same as far as Minecraft is concerned. All you need is a program that can work with transparency and that can save to the PNG file format. Okay, let's start off by taking a look at where you need to go to download the original texture file, the original resource pack for this version of Minecraft, and then we'll work on that. Okay, let's back out of this. I'll just hit the escape key here, and it's save and quit to title right down there. And let's bring this down a little bit. There we go. Now at this point, you can get to the correct folder right from the title of your Minecraft launcher right here. Just click on Options, click on Resource Packs, and then Open Resource Pack Folder right there. Now here, if you back up one step where it says Minecraft and come down to Versions, that's where you want to look into. Now the other way to do this, you can do this in a different way, and that's if you go up here and you type in percent app data percent and that takes you right to the roaming folder and that's this bit right here actually just doing a search for that let me show you that so you have a regular old drive window open it doesn't matter what it is just take that out and then type in percent app data and then percent again and hit the enter key and again that takes you into the roaming folder right here Simply as we're just at, there's the Minecraft right there. Double click on Minecraft, it's the top one, and we're back to that same location. So either way works. Either go to this through the game, which I normally do, or use the percent app data percent to get right to that roaming folder. Once we're in here, come down to where it says versions and open this up. In here, these are all the versions I currently have left on my computer. And scroll down, and you want the current version which right now is 1.15.1 you may have other stuff down here these are all beta versions the old snapshot versions before 1.15 those are the pre-release versions this is the most current release right there 1.15 and you can see which one you're in when you first launch minecraft and the bottom line of that window you'll see the latest version and the number so you can go ahead and match that number so it's 1.15 go into there and you want this jar file right here. Not the JSON, but you want that jar file. Now, if you're not seeing the extensions in there, go up to View, and right here where it says File Name Extensions, make sure that that is checked. If that's checked, then you'll see those extensions and you'll find that jar file. Okay, all we need to do now is just to copy this from this location over into a different folder. I've already done that. There it is, and there is that jar file. So I simply copied this from here and I put it over here. I made a special folder on my computer just to save my Minecraft versions and I made a new folder for 1.15 right here. Then just copied that file from here over into here. Now once you're here you need to unzip this and any unzip program will work out just fine. It just acts like a regular zip file even though it says jar it still acts like a regular zip file. So just right click on that and then choose to extract. I use 7-zip right here and if you use 7-zip come down and do extract to where you see a folder name like that don't do it extract here that puts everything in this one folder here you don't want that 
So right click and again 7-zip, extract to, in this case it says 1.15.1, it's the same name as the jar file. So use that one and then extract to that location. Now if you are using WinRAR, I have that also on here, and that's right down here, extract files, extract here, extract to 1.151, that's the one you want to use right there, the extract to, that gives you the name of that file. Now what both of those do is they will extract the zip file and put it into its own folder, which is right here. So that's what I did right there. So you have this folder next, and then in here, open this up, and a lot of stuff, ignore all that stuff, you have one folder right there called Assets. Click on that, right click, and want to copy this. So come down to Copy, and then go back one step right here, and then right click and then Paste right there. I've already done that, and that's this folder right there. That's the one that we need. Okay, that's our working folder for our custom texture pack. We've got that. You also need two more things the pack.mc meta file right here. Let me open this one up so you can see this. It's just a text file and all this really does is tell Minecraft that this is going to be a texture pack. It says pack right there. Leave that alone. Pack format. This one's important. Leave that alone but over here it should say 5. If you're working in version 1.15 or later at this point it's version 5. 1.14 and 1.13 we're version 4. So this is now version 5. That's the one you want. Over here where it says description, put anything you want over here. I just made one that has my spacesuit image in here. So that's when I named that one. Let's just rename this one. I'm going to call this one Window Pane. I'll just back up. This is just the name that shows in the list. There we go. Call it Window Pane and save. Okay, that one's done. The last thing you need is this pack.png file, and you can see it right there. It's just a picture, and the dimensions are 256 by 256. So that's all you need to do. And again, anything you want in this picture, whatever you want, I just use my spacesuit character right there with that picture of Mars in the background. Okay, so you have those three parts, the assets, the pack.mc meta, and the PNG. Those are the three parts for your custom texture pack. Now. We need to find the actual textures, and that's inside Assets. Let's open this one up. Open up where it says Minecraft, and come down to the bottom, down here where it says Textures. Ignore all these things. Come to the very bottom where it says Textures. Open that one up, and here are your different textures. We'll be changing that window pane, and that's up here under Block. So open up Block, and here are all of your textures for your standard blocks. Now these are real small images. They're 16 by 16 square. Real small. And we just need to scroll through until we find that magenta window. And they're down quite a ways in here. You can see there's a lot of these in here. These real tall things, these are animations. You need to change every single piece in this big long stack for those animations. If you see kind of a white background in there, that's going to be transparency. That's why you need to have a program that can save to transparency. There's our light gray glass right here. We're not using that one. We're using kind of a magenta glass. And let's see, there it is. Magenta stained glass. That's the one right there. Okay, so we found our texture file. I'll now open up a program to edit this in. In this case, I'll be using Photoshop Elements. Again, you can use anything you want as long as it can edit a PNG file and it can work with transparency. Okay, I'm just going to pause the video just for a second as I launch Photoshop Elements, and then we'll change the texture on this one file. Okay, here we are inside of Photoshop Elements. This is the 2020 version of that, in case you're interested. And that's the actual size of that texture. Let me just zoom in on this and bring this up to a better size. You can see this. There it is. Let's stretch that out. So it's a real small file. This is as far up as I can go. This is actually at 3200% enlargement. It's as far as I can take this thing. Now the checkerboard pattern in there, that is the way that Photoshop Elements shows transparency. So I know that this is a transparent thing. So you need to have transparency in there so you can see through the window. But we'll put all that back in. I'm not going to be using this layer here. I'll be making a new layer above that. I'll just hide that. We want a nice clear layer. Now we can put in a new window frame and kind of a cross thing. And we'll do that with any tool that can paint squares, just regular pixel squares. You can use the paintbrush over here if you want to, and you can actually set this for working with a square brush. 
Other programs will be using a pen tool or a pencil tool. I have a pencil tool over here. That gives me a square brush. You can see that right there. It's set at one pixel. So most programs will have a kind of a pencil tool or a pen tool like this at just the one pixel. I want to have a medium brown color. So let's change my color over here into the brown sections. And I'll choose kind of a, kind of a nice medium brown right there. That's fine. And then I'll just paint right at the top across here and then down this side. Now again, the things that are solid are actually solid. This because it's a window frame. The things that are that kind of a checkerboard pattern, those are clear. So this will give us a clear window. There we go. Now I want to have just two lines in here like that. And to make this real easy, I'll just use a line tool for this. And I have one right here. You set the same brown color, you can see right down there, one pixel. And I'll go up here to the upper left hand corner. I'll just pull a line down to the bottom right hand corner, just like that. Do the same thing on this side, just like that. Getting a little bit of transparency in there as well. We can take that transparency out just by erasing that out. Or if you want to, you can just paint this in with your pencil tool, whatever. Just come in and just do this. There we go. And just paint those in solid. You know, any way you want to do this is fine. I'll just put these in solid. Having that kind of a pattern in the background there to work from makes it pretty easy. So I'm just tapping on these to put in that solid paint color. Now I kind of like having that additional stuff in there, kind of real thin stuff. So I'll switch over here to my eraser brush and I'll change the size here down to one pixel. Most programs have an eraser, just like this one. And I set this at type pencil. That gives me the square. There it is. And then I can just erase this, make sure I'm on the right layer. I can hide that layer on that layer. That's fine. And we can just erase that stuff in there like that. And that leaves me with just those cross lines. And that gives us that kind of a, an old fashioned looking window frame effect. Now you can get fancier on this if you want to. Put in a drop shot if you want to on this stuff. It's up to you. That's simply putting in you know, a little more texture in here, kind of a transparency type thing. But we'll go real simple on this one. Just a simple frame with a simple cross on it. Now notice up here it still says magenta stained glass. That's the file. It's a PNG file right there. Because I have these layers in here, if I save this inside of Photoshop Elements, it's going to give me a Photoshop file, and that's just fine. So I'll click on Save. It goes to the same location, but it has the PSD or Photoshop format. This is one reason why I like doing it this way. Choose Save, because Minecraft ignores these Photoshop files, which means I can have Photoshop files for my textures in the same folder as the regular textures, and Minecraft will just ignore those. I now need to have this out also as the PNG file. So let's do a file, save as. So file, save as. And let's change this to the PNG file format, which is right there. And then choose save. It's going to overwrite the existing one. That's that magenta one. Choose OK. And there we go. We now have both of our files. I can now close this program down. And let's take a look at that folder and see what we've got. Okay, we're back into the folder where the textures are. There's that magenta. It now has our little cross pattern on it for our window. There's my saved Photoshop file. And this is the one that I'm changing my textures in. So I can always go back to this in the future and change my textures again. It's just real nice. As long as I save it back to the PNG file format, we're just fine. And again, Minecraft ignores these PSD files. So I can just leave these in here. There's no problem at all with this. So that's all done. We now need to back out again. There's your block, there's the textures, Minecraft, assets, and back here 1.15.1, that's our working folder. So we've changed the texture here in the assets. We now need to combine this with our pack.mc meta and the pack.png file. So I'll just hold the control key down, click on both of those. So I have these three things selected. The assets folder, this is our changed assets folder, pack.mc meta and pack.png. Now to combine these, Let's just right click on this. If you're working with 7-zip, just come in here and go to Add to Archive, and we'll then give that a name. Let me show you that one. Click in here, Add to Archive. And in here, the 
Main thing to watch out for is the archive format where it says zip. Make sure you're working with the zip format right there. You can change the name of here if you want to. We'll just call this one window. Window pane, there it is. That will then give us that window pane. I'll just choose OK. It will then zip this together. And you can see it working right there. There is the temporary file. This will become the final zip file, which will be our final texture pack file as soon as this thing is finished. Okay, there it is, window pane. I'm going to do one small change on this. I'm just going to change the name and put a dash between window and pane and not leave a space in there. Sometimes that can solve little problems. Okay, let's say you're working with WinRAR instead. So let's do assets, hold the control key down. That's our pack.mc meta and the pack.png. Right click. And in this case, we want to add to archive right there. Click on that one. This will bring up the WinRAR program where we have all of our different options. Here we go. And again, you can name it up here anything you want. The main thing though is to come down here where it says archive format right there and click on zip. This has to be on the zip file format or it's not going to work for you. That's very, very important when you're working with WinRAR. Notice it says zip up here now. I'm just going to change what it says over here. We'll call this one window pane 2. So there's the name on the zip folder format. Choose OK. And this will then zip that file up together. And there you go. Actually, WinRAR is a lot faster than that 7-zip, but 7-zip is totally free. So, you know, it's up to you. Okay, there we go. There's the two. These are exactly the same. The top one was done inside of 7-zip. Bottom one was done in WinRAR. Okay, now we need to take these and put one of these, either one, doesn't matter which one in this case, over into the resource pack folder. And it's easy to do. I'll scroll over here. And if we go back to Minecraft, this is our versions right there that we looked at originally. This is back up one step to Minecraft. You find your resource packs are right there. I'll open this one up. There's my resource packs in here. Let's just copy. I'll use this top one. Just copy this over. I'll just right drag like that and copy. I always copy instead of moving, so I can always go back and do something else over here if I want to make fixes or adjustments. So I just copied it into the resource pack. Let me show you how you can find this folder again inside of Minecraft. So if you closed down that folder, I left mine open of course, if you closed it down, either do that percent app data percent shortcut right here on the address bar, or when you're on this page here, click on options, click on resource packs, and then open resource pack folder, same thing, there it is, same folder. And then just copy it from your work location over into that folder and you're all set to go. I'll close that one down. Let's just minimize this. There it is, I'll minimize that. Let's just click on done for a second and done. So we're now at this page. Our resource pack has been fixed. Let's go into options, go back into resource packs and you'll see your new resource pack over here on the left hand side. There it is, window-pane.zip. Simply click on the picture and that moves it over to this side. This is your working side. I can take these out if I want to, just kind of click on that and move them back over here to the available side. So here's our resource pack. It's all set to go. Click on done. That loads that pack in. Click on done again, and we're back to this page. Let's now launch this. There's my demo world right there. And we'll make sure that our windows have changed. And there it is, you can see it in the background. Let me just fix things here a little bit. Let's enlarge this and go over here to front view and let's walk up there and take a look at that and there we go we've changed the texture on those windows we now have that nice cross pattern going on in there you can see through them we have our transparency that's all working out just fine let's go back out a little ways and take a look at this and see how it looks from a distance we'll just hop up here there we go and there it is, kind of a nice old-fashioned look now on those windows. So real easy to do. If I was doing this, you know, as a final texture, I'd take a little bit more time on those, put some shadowing in there, give them some depth, things like that so they look a bit better. Maybe put some reflections on the glass, that kind of stuff. But that's the basics. That's how you can change your textures, and that can give you a lot more to make your world look a lot more interesting, a lot more authentic, like we just did just then. Okay. So there we go. That's how to make a custom texture pack for Minecraft 1.15. Now if you like this video, 
make sure you hit that like button and of course click on share and share with your friends. Again, the more shares I get, the more videos I can make. Also, don't forget to subscribe. I do a bunch of videos every single week, about half of those on graphics programs like Photoshop Elements and about half on Minecraft. Okay, and I'll see you next time.